Madam Chancellor, it is an honor to present Professor Ahmed Zawail, Nobel laureate and preeminent statesman whose pioneering breakthroughs and advocacy for science and peace have placed him in the front ranks of the world's intellectual community. Dr. Zawail is the Linus Pauling Professor of Chemistry and Professor of Physics at the California Institute of Technology. He is also the director of the Moore Foundation Center for Physical Biology at Caltech. And for 10 years, he served as the director for the National Science Foundation's Foundation Laboratory for Molecular Sciences. In 1999, Professor Zawail was the sole recipient of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his developments in femtoscience, in which chemical reactions are photographed over femtosecond timescales using ultra-fast laser techniques. To give you some perspective, one femtosecond is one billionth of one millionth of one second. Femtosecond spectroscopy enables scientists to understand chemistry at its most fundamental level. It allows scientists to observe and understand the formation and the breaking of a chemical bond when two atoms come together or break apart. This groundbreaking development is a foundation for research around the world, making possible significant advances in chemistry and biology and their adjacent sciences. More recently, he and his group have developed 4D electron microscopy for the direct visualization of materials and biological phenomena in the four dimensions of space and time. These methods provide exquisite time resolution and spatial resolution and allow one to image structures at the nanometer scale, including structures that are responsible for diseases such as Alzheimer's. Dr. Zawail has taken a leadership role in promoting the potential for science and education to contribute to world peace, particularly in the developing world. In 2009, U.S. President Obama appointed him to his Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, and in the same year, named him the first U.S. science envoy to the Middle East. A brilliant scientist, humanist, and superb communicator, Dr. Zawail represents a standard of excellence that can only be described as remarkable. In addition to his Nobel Prize, he has garnered many honors and awards, far too many to enumerate here. But they include over 50 honorary degrees for many of the world's top universities and many orders of state and merit. The government of Egypt has honored him with the formation of a city. It's established the Zawail City of Science and Technology, and Dr. Zawail is the first chairman of its board of trustees. Today, it is our enormous privilege to recognize his contributions to science and humanity. Madam Chancellor, Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you now confer upon Professor Ahmed Zawail the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Ahmed Zwail, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Dr. Zwail will be hooded by Dr. Gordon Myers, Associate Vice President, Academic, and by Dr. Mark Walker, Registrar and Executive Director of Student Enrollment. Thank you very much. And 
to? They ask that you can raise the mic for the guest speaker. It's been too low for Gary and for some of the others. Yeah. It is with great pleasure that I now call on Dr. Ahmed Zawail for his convocation address. Dr. Zawail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You might hear some distortion in my voice. I have a little bit of cold, but uh, no Ebola or any of that stuff. So. Well, thanks, Madam Chancellor. Thanks, the President and the faculty, especially the one that voted for me. I think that's the one. And uh, I thank, of course, the students, the parents, and the friend, friends for this special day. <clears throat> Today, I will not preach for you. I have four children, and I know from my wife's and my self-experience on events like this, they are not interested in the convocation speaker to go on and preach. And they really don't want to listen to any of that stuff. They want to get to the party. <laughs> and so <clears throat> I'm going just to leave you with bullets. They all emphasize one word. If I can get you all, graduates, to go home today with this one word, then I succeeded. And this word is called passion. That is the word I want to leave you with today. So, <clears throat> and you can look it up if you like uh, to find about it. When I was your age, I did not know what the Nobel Prize is. And this is true. I came from a very distinguished historical country called Egypt. Alexandria Library was the shine of the world in science and technology. I went to the University of Alexandria myself. But during my time, the word Nobel Prizes were for the West. You hear about it in America, in Europe, in Canada, you have some, and so on. So I didn't really think of this. But for some reason, I was truly passionate. And I don't know where it came from. Is it genetic? Is it the food I was eating? I have no idea. I was passionate about acquiring knowledge. I was passionate about learning. I didn't even have a pressure from the family at the time. But my drive to learn more and more is actually what took me to America. True, I was the first of my class, but it, that was not enough. I had to have my own passion that drives me and go to the best institution in the Western world. Going to the United States, I encountered numerous challenges. Don't believe anybody that tells you that the challenges before were less or more. Your generation have certain challenges. We had other challenges. My challenges were scientific. As I mentioned, I was the first in my class, but our sciences were different from what I'm learning at the new institution. So I had to learn all of these languages. Culturally, I met you the challenge. I come from the quote unquote the East, and I'm going now to the West. The culture is somewhat different, and one has to readjust into this uh, new culture and to assimilate in it in a positive way. And that takes energy. And finally, is the political opportunities or political challenges 
Uh, again, we come with different ideas and we come with different ideologies. And these political challenges were, was quite significant when I arrived in 1969. But again, passion wins. Passion wins because I survived and I became in the United States for more than 40 years, acquiring many of the positions that I could not have dreamed of achieving when I was at your age. It was passion that took me through all of these challenges. Beginning with research at Caltech, Caltech is a wonderful institution, produced to the world so far 35 Nobel Prizes in the sciences and in the medicine. And to be among such faculty was intimidating. And so we were thinking of whole new ideas. My idea at the time as an assistant professor, and as you heard from Professor Gary, was to visualize how atoms move on their space and time. If I have listened to all the experts, including some Nobel Prize winners at the time, who said, this cannot be done. I'll be in violation of things called the uncertainty principles and all of that stuff. Not only that, they saw in it that there might not be too much of a way of application or usefulness. Well, that didn't stop me. And again, it was passion that wins. Because at the end, with my group at Caltech, we did the work in less than 10 years from being hired as an assistant professor that was cited by the Nobel Prize. Usually the Nobel Prize in Science and Medicine is given close to the age of 70 to 80. I was very fortunate to be the sole recipient in the early 50 of my age. So it's not only me, it's the passion, the enthusiasm to what I wanted uh, to be doing. Being concerned about the world of the half-nuts, as you also heard in the introduction. This is something close to my heart. For a long time, I wrote about it. I got actively involved in Washington, in Egypt, in many other places. I met numerous uh, uh, officials about this issue. Well, a huge number of people told me that I was wasting my time, especially that happened after the Nobel Prize, where I could have stayed in California and enjoyed the beaches and enjoyed my family, which actually I feel guilty about them because I was traveling most of the time. So I could drop all of that stuff uh, of the helping the half-nuts. But again, it was passion the twins. Today, we began in the Middle East, one of the premier institutions of the city of science and technology. I thank the government for previous government and the current government for naming it after me and making it one of the centers of excellence. And this, by the way, we did all of this in less than three years but after many, many years of effort to try to get it where it is. So what is the moral of this passion story? One word. <clears throat> One, and here I'm going to be just giving three bullets, not too many. <laughs> One, develop your own passion. Work on it hard. It's not easy. But if you find it, you will be the happiest person on earth. I guarantee you, you will jump from bed at 6 o'clock to go to work. So develop your own passion 
and in the process also be compassionate and optimist. Two, and you will see this was time, education and knowledge are the power engine that can change our world. We are not going to change our world with wars and uh, hegemony and all of that stuff. We're going to change our world by the soft power of education. I am convinced, I travel the world over, and I'm convinced that the price of one F-16 can make a huge difference in the world of today. Huge. Education in classrooms and in Africa, in Asia, and it will be a better planet. And finally, be compassionate. When you are on the way up or at the top, do not forget, forget those who are struggling at the bottom. When you are on the way at the top, try, try hard to do something about those at the bottom. And the last message, have fun. Have fun. Graduation really means to have fun, not in the bars and not to get drunk and stoned, all of this stuff. No. I meant enjoy all the great things that exist uh, in life, culturally, uh, athletically. There's so much in your country and the others that you can have fun. I always remember this because my, my late father, for some reason, had this motto always, and he transmitted this to me all along. Enjoy it because life is too short. Congratulations.